Welcome everybody to uh, Talk of the Town. This is show 415, and uh, we are going to have another great show uh, this, this evening. Uh, my name is Andrew Botieri, and I'll be your guest host, filling in for Karen Bukes tonight. Uh, but before we get started, I want to say hello to our sponsors first. Up, as always, is uh, Dave and Kevin Gallerani over at Cape Auto and Auto Repair, uh, right here on Samoset and Plymouth Streets, or Sandwich Streets here in Plymouth. Great people, uh, and Dave, I know you're watching. You're one of our three uh, uh, viewers that watch uh, every, every Wednesday night, so thank you for tuning in again today. Uh, we also have uh, Jeff Cohen of One Stop Painting, uh, painting, papering, gutter cleaning, uh, deck staining at its best, and also if we get ice blocks in your gutters, Jeff's the guy to call as well. And uh, also, uh, Wrestling Brewster at PC uh, Solutions. Uh, with wrestling, uh, computers, printers, and electronics are his specialty. And I think he also has a show on PAC TV uh, as well. And we have a new sponsor, uh, Quintil's Market, Farmer's Market on uh, One Scooby Circle in Plymouth Industrial Park off Cherry Street. Uh, great prices, fresh produce, and many other great foods open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday. And Quintil's Farmer's Market is also held indoors uh, in the inside warehouse. And again, that's one Scooby Circle, uh, Plymouth Industrial Park. So, and again, this is show four, uh, 415. And this is um, uh, right before we, we finish the year off and go into the holidays. But before I get started with my little blurb and talking to our two uh, guests that we have, which is uh, uh, Anne Marie Oriola from uh, Anna Marie's Dessert Cafe and Joan Collins from. Um, Lions, Joan Collins. Say, I made you a movie star already. Uh, <laughs> well, I just got to text you guys that it was on four Collins Road, so I had the Collins in my head. Ah, get rid of this guy. Give me the hook. And um, Joan Lyons of three daughters, uh, jewelry and apparel, and down at the waterfront as well. We'll be talking to them. But I know we wanted to flip over to Steve. Uh, Steve had a little shout out, a holiday shout out that he wanted to give. So, Kenny, if you would be so kind. I want to wish everybody from Three Amigos a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, but especially to Steve Swift from Centerville, uh, Cedarville. He's a great guy, and uh, I just wanted to say, Steve, I know you're watching tonight because I called you and told you I was going to do this. <laughs> so here I am, and I wish you a Merry Christmas, and maybe I'll see you over the holidays. So thank you very much, and I'm done. Great. All right, cool. All right, well, we are, we are back here, and again, uh, before we get started with our guests, I did want to sort of uh, do a little uh, review of 2016, uh, some of the good, the bad, and the ugly, and uh, of people that we lost in 2016. Of course, close to my heart, and I definitely had a crush on her, was uh, Florence Henderson. Uh, Mrs. Brady passed away, along with music greats Prince, David Bowie. Uh, we also had <clears throat> uh, Glenn Frey, uh, Greg Lake, and Keith Emerson of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Recently passed, uh, Mrs. Nancy Reagan also passed away, uh, Justice Scalia, Muhammad Ali, and Harper Lee, which is one of my favorite movies and favorite book that I ever read, To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, also, Arnold Palmer, uh, Ellie Weisel, uh, Simone Perez, uh, Senator and astronaut John Glenn, and uh, Maurice White of Earth, Wind, and Fire, and thankfully, Fidel Castro. Also, uh, just again, uh, our country and the world has continued to uh, be attacked with terrorism and just again be vigilant and keep all those, especially with what happened in Berlin uh, this past week, keep everybody in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, some other events in 2016, um, the Zika virus was big. Uh, also, uh, even though the Patriots didn't win the Super Bowl, I feel good that we're going to win it this year and Peyton Manning still sucks. <laughs> um, a, uh, a lock of John Lennon's hair actually sold for $35,000 at an auction, which is, which is wild. Uh, we also sadly had the terror of Orlando nightclub and also uh, the break of uh, the United Kingdom from the EU. Uh, so we've got a lot of crazy things going on and then also the um, surprise election of <clears throat> Donald Trump as well. So... Uh, Wanted just to kind of give some of those shout outs and again to our summer Olympic athletes who did a fantastic job winning more gold uh, than any other country 
And, uh, you know, those athletes are fantastic. So that is my quick little year in review. And uh, with that, oh, I actually have one more thing that I wanted to talk about in 2016. And, of course, I didn't pass this by Kenny because I knew that he, one, wouldn't either let me or, two, uh, would just say, no, nah, there's no need to. But as you know, in the uh, uh, May of 2016, Old Colony Memorial, there was a nice piece done on Kenny Bukes. Uh, with his fight against uh, cancer. And let me tell you about a guy who is inspirational, and he's, he's, he's behind the glass tonight, as he always is, doing his job and doing it uh, effortlessly. But um, I just, you know, just want to say a quick you know, thanks to this guy. He's been an inspiration to me. Uh, he'll tell you that I've been an inspiration to him, but he's lying. He's been one to me. And I just am so thankful and blessed uh, that to have watched him come through this battle, and he's still fighting, he's still going strong, and so uh, wishing him and Karen and the family a wonderful 2017. So there you go, Kenny, I got it in, so too bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here we go. Uh, again, as you come on this, if, you, if you've seen our show in the past, we do really talk about small businesses, because the small businesses, whether it's in Plymouth or any uh, town, is, is really the heartbeat of of that particular town and, and being able to bring businesses in. When I first moved to Plymouth um, in uh, 2001, I can remember on Main Street, all the empty storefronts, the for lease signs that were up and down uh, Main Street and Court Street. And uh, I was just sitting with some of the members of the Plymouth Chamber and also the Plymouth Bay Cultural District, which I just took over as chair. And we were just really in, a, in amazement <clears throat> at what the downtown looks like in the, in the downtown, the waterfront, uh, there's a lot going on. And, you know, back in 2001 and the early 2000s, Plymouth sort of was like that redheaded stepchild between Boston and Cape Cod. People might have swung through Plymouth and maybe stopped for a couple hours. And it's exciting now to see that Plymouth has really become a destination. And the big part of that is also the, the culture and the arts that we have here. Um, I sit on the board of Project Arts. We do the free Wednesday night music. But there's you know, the Spire Center. Uh, there's also the, uh, the Center for the Arts, the Philharmonic, uh, the, the businesses, the retail, the restaurants, the shopping. And Plymouth really is a very vibrant, vibrant uh, uh, town now. And the big part of that is small businesses. So, you know, Kenny and I and the rest of the uh, Three Amigos crew really feel it's important to highlight the small businesses because without the small businesses, you know, we wouldn't have the vibrancy that we have here in Plymouth. So uh, we're going to talk to two small business uh, owners that are in town. Again, as I mentioned, uh, we have Joan Lyons from Three Daughters uh, Jewelry and Apparel, uh, as well as uh, Anne-Marie Oriola from uh, Anna maries Dessert Cafe. So um, we got this, there we, look at that. See that? Here they are. Here they, <laughs> drum roll, please. Here they are. Uh, anyways, I'm going to start with, uh, with Joan, and uh, welcome. Thank welcome. you very much, Glad Andrew. to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about your business, uh, mainly you know, a little bit about the, the store itself, but I think what a lot of people want to know, um, and even for myself as a small business owner, is people say, how did you get started? You know, what motivated you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've been in business for two years now, um, and what motivated me, I don't know, it's something I've always wanted to do, and I was in education prior to doing this, um, and I think, um, you know, I re reflect on how I got here, it's like, you know, you have experiences in life, and you know, you wonder, why am I being put through this, mm -hmm. and then you begin to realize, well, I think there's a result to all of this experience, and this is what I was meant to do. So, um, you know, I, I feel like over the past few years and in, in the positions I've had, it was almost like boot camp, you know, it was tough, but um, it made me really focus on, you know, starting a business and mm -hmm. saying, this is the right time. If I don't do it now, I might never do it. Um, it's scary, um, but I just jumped in and, and I did it, and, and I had to do it pretty quickly because I wanted to, you know, keep the cash flow going if possible. Yeah, that's um, important. I it, hear. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it's important. <laughs> One of the things I always say, and uh, it just becomes so so much more meaningful as I, as I go along here, is you don't know what you don't know, 
And if I really knew what I was getting myself into, I probably would have been frozen with fear and didn't and wouldn't do it, you know. But I had a lot of encouragement along the way, and I, I thank the folks that did give me the encouragement to just kind of do it, jump in and, and have faith that it's going to work out and be positive. And uh, I think stay focused on what the end result should be. And as far as, um, you know, my goal, it's really to reach people and make a difference in their lives. It wasn't mm -hmm. about making money so much. It was more about just connecting with people. I really enjoy people. So mm -hmm. it's been a fun road. It's a little scary at times, you know, but it's been a lot of fun. That's so. great. And the three daughters name comes from your... We have three, three daughters. daughters. Yes, yes. So was there any other names that you had, were toying with? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, one afternoon I just kind of was on the couch and texting my friends and going through some some names, and we just arrived at three daughters. So it was my best friends and I kind of picked it. That's excellent. So, yeah. That's excellent. Well, great. Yeah. And Marie... Talk a little bit about yourself, your business. Obviously, I, I was sort of uh, <clears throat> part of that, the beginnings of all, all of that, and helping you with your business plan and stuff. But talk a little bit about, again, what motivated you, your desire, and, and whatnot. Well, I've been in the corporate world since I was 18 years old, and I, um, it's, I'm more of a people person. I like to be out there with people, and I like to... You know, some, like Joan said, it's just the co connecting with them. Mm -hmm. And um, I have more fun at my cafe than I do you in the do. corporate world. <laughs> I enjoy my customers. Um, it was definitely something I've always wanted to do. Not necessarily a cafe, um, but I did find my niche. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring something to Plymouth that wasn't there. Not another bar, not another restaurant, but something different. And so I did a little research and decided that this would be it. And it, see what happens. You either jump in or jump out. Yeah. And I just <laughs> jumped in and full force. So I um, still work full time mm -hmm. for Johnson & Johnson. And I run my cafe and okay. with my mom by my side. Your mom and, and Michaela, at least for the holiday. Right, well, she's home from college. I, I saw that on Facebook. <laughs> she yeah. is here. Um, what What do you offer at your at your cafe? Well, I um, it's mostly Italian. I have gelato, which yes, you, you have do. to travel forty miles to get. If you don't, <laughs> if you're, you have to either go to Boston or there's a shop down in Hyannis, um, which was one of the things I wanted to bring in. There's ice cream shops everywhere. There's no gelato. Um, I have Italian pastries. I have amazing coffee, <laughs> um, and I also have Italian cookies, and I do pastry platters for the holidays, and so, and I'm that place you want to go to after you've had dinner, and you don't quite want to have dessert yet, and you go for that little walk, mm -hmm. then you're like, yes, I'm ready mm -hmm. for dessert. And, and she's got killer tiramisu, let me tell um, you. <laughs> and cappuccinos. And cappuccinos, yes, yes. <laughs> Excellent. And what about you? What products? Uh, uh, apparel, jewelry. Mm -hmm. And we uh, <clears throat> we do a lot with local authors and artists. Um, we actually featured you, Andrew, which was very oh, enjoyable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> That was a lot of fun. <laughs> that is fun. Yeah. And, you know, that's something I really enjoy. There's a lot of talent here in Plymouth, so I just love giving them, you know, the authors and artists, a, a platform to really, you know, demonstrate what they're capable of. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, yourself and Ann Jolis, um, we've had her three times. And, um, yeah, we They're have... Just some of the things, if you want to yep. talk about just some of these as I Thank put these you. up. These are some All of right. her products. Yeah, and this is a local... Artist. Local artist, yep, Marian Elsner and Joan Welsh. Um, and she also has my book. Yes. Which is on <laughs> So if you're really looking for a unique Christmas gift, mm -hmm. um, she has those uh, at, at her store that are, that are autographed. Just thought I'd throw that out That's there. right. That's right. And the new, uh, the new book about the... Um, the lobsters in town as well. That's been a real popular yes. gift for yeah. the Chris Christmas yeah. time. So we offer the Dovera bracelet, which is a handmade bracelet in Watertown. It's a reversible bracelet. Um, takes the um, artist about four hours to make a bracelet. So those have been very well received. Tamara Crosby in town finds all the sea glass here in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. um, so these bracelets do very well. Um, and uh, this is uh, butterfly jewelry. Um, butterflies are from the rainforest, and they die naturally. And a couple um, works to oh, wow. um, reserve or preserve the um, the butterfly wing, and they wrap it in sterling silver. And then this is another local um, artist who does sea glass. And again, Joan. Um, 
This is Marian Elsner, who does sea glass art, mm -hmm. and Joan Welsh, an accomplished artist and photographer in town. Is uh, Joan the other one who works at your store? Uh, she helps out at the store. Yeah, she's there I've a met lot. Her a couple times. Mm -hmm. I've never right. Been in there. And that you know that that's the other thing I love, Andrew, is not only you know meeting people like you, authors, but just the artists are just so amazing, and uh, I just love connecting with them and, mm -hmm. and, and helping them to promote their business and their talent. So it's really a gift to own this business. I really enjoy it very much. Well, that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. And uh, you as well, I know that you do the, um, the dessert, the cookies for the holidays, but also on the weekends you do... Breakfast. Breakfast, mm -hmm. which believe me, <laughs> it's awesome. So what mm -hmm. kind of breakfasts do you... Because so, you've sort of expanded that menu since you first opened I have. Up. I am limited um, with my space mm -hmm. right now. Um, so I offer, on both Saturday and Sunday, I offer breakfast sandwiches. You can have your choice of homemade Italian sausage, bacon, um, or linguisa. You can have it on a toasted or grilled English muffin, and here's the kicker, or a grilled Portuguese sweet roll. Mm -hmm. um, so that has been... That has been the biggest thing, bringing people back, is the Portuguese sweet roll. I try to do things a little different than everybody else is doing, offer something different. I also have Portuguese sweet bread French toast on Saturdays. And on Sundays, I also offer a waffle, Belgium waffle, <laughs> Andrew's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take my Benadryl before I go. Yes. <laughs> Did you take your pill? <laughs> um, it's served strawberry shortcake style, so it's topped with fresh strawberries, whipped cream, chocolate sauce, walnuts, mm. and it's yeah. that's another big one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk about if you need sugar to get you going in the morning, <laughs> that's that's the place to go. Um, with a nice cappuccino, latte, yeah. and then also during um, the first Saturday. Uh, you also, on occasion, have some entertainment. I know I've played I there I do. Past. You have played there, yeah. yes. And that's the other part about um, what uh, we, we're trying to do at the Plymouth Bay Cultural District is really connect the waterfront and the downtown so that both businesses in both areas thrive in regards to being able to get visitors, um, whether they're local, whether they're in from out of town, in from out of the country, uh, to be able to really get a taste of all the small businesses that, that, are, that are there. Um, what were some of the challenges, uh, Amory? and, you know, as you first sat down and started penciling things out, um, <laughs> what were some of the, the challenges that you um, sort of expected, but then, as we know, when we get into stuff, that we didn't expect. Exactly. I definitely didn't expect to have to take down my whole doorway to get my gelato freezer ready. <laughs> it was not in the budget, I can tell you that. Um, I was not there for that. Um, however, um, my daughter was and a friend of mine. And oh yes, it was, it was definitely an expense that I did not expect, expect, but worked through it and we got it in there. And then that was probably the biggest hurdle you know after all the paperwork's done the business plan planning it out mm -hmm. getting your suppliers you know where you're going to get your coffee from where you're going to get your desserts from um i would love my whole theory behind it my thought process behind it was i don't want to be in the kitchen baking i want to be out with my customers talking to them getting to know them and i have quite a few that i've um i've done that with but i'd have to say my biggest challenge was that gelato Jennifer. freezer. They videotaped it. It's on my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was definitely a challenge. So it seems to be something that really has uh, driven both you and Joan is, you know, is that the public, you know, the, the, the social aspect mm -hmm. uh, of the business. And I think that, you know, it's important for, you know, businesses when you do have sort of that front line where you are in front of customers versus you know, running a business that is like, you know, web-based only where people just order stuff and you ship it out to them. Uh, it does take uh, that type of a personality to do that. And I think, um, you know, I know you've got regulars that come by all the time. All the time. And, and it's, you know, granted you make a great cappuccino, <laughs> but it's also because they enjoy that engagement uh, as well. And I'm sure Joan, mm -hmm. uh, the same with you right. uh, in your location mm -hmm. uh, as well. What were some of your challenges when you were, for, again, looking to put this plan together, mm -hmm. and then it's like, oh, crap. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, there's a lot of those. Yeah. Oh, crap. A lot of old craps. Yeah. yeah. I think it continues. You know, I'm always looking for trends. And um, the advice other local small businesses gave me is stop looking for trends. There aren't any. So that, that makes it really tricky. And I, I think it is because we're in a unique situation being in Plymouth. We have so many tourists that visit. They see over a million tourists a year. Yeah. That's a lot. It's like, how do you plan for that, right? So, you know, we know we have our local folks and you really want to try to reach them. And there's quite a few of them as well. But yeah, it's a matter of looking for those trends so you know, you know what to order and what what people are looking for, but when you have people from all over the world visiting Plymouth, mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit tricky to try mm -hmm. to figure out what people are looking for. And how did you come up with your your product mix? Because I know you've, you, you know, I, I would probably call your store very eclectic mm -hmm. because there's, I mean, it, it just is. There's a little right. bit of this, a little bit of that. I know there's other authors that you have done stuff with as mm -hmm. well. So how did that product mix come up? I mean, what did you when you were kind of planning yeah. it out. Yeah, so it's so not scientific. Um, it was supposed to be just jewelry, <laughs> yeah. right? And then I walked into the space I'm in now and I loved it so much. And I said, I want to be here, but it's so huge, I couldn't fill it with all jewelry. Oh, okay. So that's when I decided to bring in other things. So that's how I um, expanded into clothing and, uh, and gift items. And then just realizing then there were so many um, artists and authors in, in town. So it's been great. It's really evolved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that wasn't the plan, though. I'm not that not that smart and sophisticated <laughs> and planful. Yeah. Now, you've been in business now for over two, two years. Just over yeah, two just years? Yeah, just over two years, yeah. And you're going on a year and a half? I'm um, two and a half years. Oh, two and, two and a half. half. Wow. Oh, it goes by fast. It does. <laughs> well, they say that that first 12 months is usually the one filled with the most angst <clears throat> in regards to, you know, did I do the right thing? Um, and you still will have, you know, some of those feelings. But how do you feel now? Uh, and again, with the business climate in Plymouth, the, the 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 traffic. You know, of course, we still need to get for like the nineteenth time. We still need to get parking uptown. <laughs> um, so, but how do you feel after two and a half years of sitting back and saying, you know what, um, did I do the right thing? Well, I believe I did. I am happy with my cafe. I've added things. As it's starting to look more like you're in Boston because it's my daughter came in the other day and she hadn't been in in a while. She's like, I'm feeling a little like clustered in here because there's so much stuff to look at. I don't have any regrets. You do have your ups and downs, mm -hmm. as you know, and your trials. And, but I mean, my first winter was that bad winter. Mm -hmm. And that was, I survived that. So, and it's just gotten better. So you have your struggles, and you're always going to have a freezer breaking down, mm -hmm. or you're going to have, and you just work through it. Yeah. And I have great family support, and you just work through it. But mm -hmm. And you also offer gluten-free items, too. Which I do. my heart. Mm. Well, and I have celiacs yes, myself. Yep. Um, so I do have, have gluten-free whoopie pies, mm. which are amazing. They're my breakfast every morning. Don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I also have... Um, gluten-free chocolate tort and I am playing around with gluten-free pizzelis which I mm. did make and then all of a sudden they decided to stick to my machine um, but I do have once in a while I'll do gluten-free waffles I have gluten-free chocolates I have gluten-free banana bread biscottis soft mm. they're very good two of those in the morning will do you well exactly <laughs> they're great but I do offer gluten-free items and I'm constantly looking for more to bring in because I do have celiacs um, also, what, what's the um, the company that you use that, that you get your desserts from? Because it's, it's, it's a company from Italy. Yes. So not all of them do come from this company, mm -hmm. but a good majority of them. I do get a lot of my stuff from the North End. Mm -hmm. So you, no need to go to Boston. Just come <laughs> to Anna Maria's. So, but I have a company. It's Bindi. It's out of um, Milan, Italy. That's where my gelato comes from. They're... Um, that's where they're based. They have four distribution centers in the U.S. They did just sell their distribution center to Acardi Foods. Um, so Acardi is distributing the Bindi products. But it is all the recipes from Bindi. It's their Bindi products. Great. And Joan, for you, where mm -hmm. you, you, you're very diverse, um, you get like... Uh, um, magazines to look through or do you go to... to 
different types of uh, shops and stuff? Or mm -hmm. How do you decide what goes into your into your store? I don't have time to go to the shops, <laughs> although I would love to. <laughs> I do go to shows, so I do, you know, find things that way. But um, a lot of my artists, too, they spread the word and help me to bring in new artwork. Like, they go to a lot of shows, so they'll connect me to um, other artists. We're now carrying this uh, hand-turned wood pieces, pens, and bottle openers and things like that. And the woman actually is from Plymouth, uh, Dawn Kessel. So she does great work, and um, her partner, Kim, does makes jewelry. Um, so, yeah, it's just about word of mouth, you know, like finding pieces that are unique that um, you're not going to see everywhere, you know, and, and they're kind of hidden gems. So that, that's really how, um, how I find things. And I also carry the UGG line, which is big. So UGG clothing and slippers. And, um, Good to know. Is that the Tom Brady UGG? Tom Brady, yes. We're waiting, waiting for Tom to visit the store, out. and I'll be sure to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> My husband's waiting for Giselle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what, now you're, you're uh, was it coincidence that you're located next to a winery? <laughs> kind I'm of. I'm just curious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it works out really nicely. I'm always there to sample things yeah. if they need yeah. a second opinion. But yeah, it works out really nicely. So Mike and Pam Carr own Pl Plymouth Bay Winery. And they're just great neighbors. And um, they're doing fantastic. They're selling now um, in liquor stores. And uh, so we try to plan a lot of events together and mm -hmm. work together. Since we are in that building, we have that great porch. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so it works out nicely. Yeah, I just saw, uh, I don't know if it was if them specifically, but... They did have a table at the talk of the um, taste of the town, uh -huh. which is the Plymouth Library's yes. big annual um, fundraiser, mm -hmm. and uh, they they were there sampling, mm -hmm. you know, some of their goods. Uh, and they were well. on Chronicle too. Oh, they were. Yes, oh, yeah, great. yeah, yeah. Just, okay, great. Plymouth is like on the map. I know. Yeah. You know? And so you're behind Carmen's. Mm -hmm. and, um, yes. Yep. And uh, Aria's. Aria's place. restaurant, yep. yes, yep. which we do a lot with Aria as well at Cafe uh, Nicole's. We ha hold a lot of events there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so it's great. We love working with our neighbors. And Maui Wowie, uh, Rich owns oh, Maui right. Wowie. Yep. Yep. Um, we do a lot with him as well. And Cranberry House, John uh, and his wife own Cranberry House. So, yeah, just we have great neighbors. Yeah, we really you do. You guys do. Mm -hmm. And you are located uptown? Yes, 20 Court Street. Diagonally across from the Spire Center, mm -hmm. who I am actually going to be meeting with soon to try to coordinate something with the Spire Center and the cafe, maybe even possibly having private times like once the shows are over or, you know, if they want to come over or offer coupons if you show your tickets or so I am working on that. That's great. Go ahead. That's great because so. they've, got, they've got a lot of great shows there. <clears throat> Lloyd and Bob uh, do a fantastic job. And, uh, you know, when Project Arts is working with them and doing some, uh, some shows there, you know, we're always also looking for, <clears throat> you know, once the venue event was over, you know, where are people going to go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to get, uh, you know, because most of the shows might be over by, you know, 10-ish, and a lot of the restaurants were already starting to, you know, turn up their curbside. Mm -hmm. So to be able to work with them on, on that and, and also other networking, um, you know, opportunities and events like when we did the book mm -hmm. thing down at um, uh, Cafe Nicole's, mm -hmm. you supplied the desserts. Right. Yes. Uh, which, Thank you. Which, which was welcome. great. Everybody loved them, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> especially me. <laughs> and so uh, that's important. So what do you do, um, Anne-Marie? Uh, aside from this uh, possible connection with uh, the Spire to really promote, um, you know, your businesses, whether it's through, you know, networking events or through social media, what are some of the things that you really key on as a small business owner to get your message out there? I have found Facebook has, is, um, social media is, is huge. I mean, you can get to so many people in such a short period of time. I have found that to be my biggest asset as far as advertising. I have done the mailers. I have done the newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, I have found that Facebook, social media, has been my biggest, biggest asset as far as that goes. I do donate mm -hmm. a lot of uh, gift certificates, the concerts on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. um, I've done that. Um, a lot of schools are... If there's things going on, such as um, they're trying to raise money or there's raffles and they need people to donate, I'll do that also. But mostly Facebook. And I, and I do, if people come to me, I pretty much don't turn them away. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I try not to. 
And in regards to Facebook, <clears throat> are you, because again, I know there's you know, some people that I know that run small businesses that are probably not uh, very social media savvy. Mm -hmm. uh, they think it's, it's some big monster out there, but, you know, and, and I think once, you know, there've been some people that I've, I've just said, gosh, it's so easy to do. It is. But there's that, you know, with some people, there's that technology fear, if you would. Um, how are you gaining more and more people to like your page? I am advertising to my friends and the people who have liked my page and their friends. And it, the, the cost is so minimal mm -hmm. that you cannot not do it. Mm. It just reaches so many people. And you can give them a budget, and they work within that budget. They stop when, you reach, when they reach the budget. So it, I, I feel it's the only way to go. I mean, social media these days is the easiest way, way to reach thousands of people. And what you're talking about is the fact that on Facebook, you can buy ad space with, you know, I mean, as little as, you know, $5 a week. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And they will, you know, it, what's great about that, and, and we use it for Project Arts um, when we're maybe doing a paid concert versus our free concerts, <laughs> but, um, you know, you can put a, a start date, an end date, <clears throat> how much, how much, what your budget is, and then what's great about that is they reach people who don't even know you exist yet. Exactly. So it's not your friends of friends. Uh, these are people who you can even give them a radius of how far out you want it to go. Uh, and you know, I've done that <laughs> on a couple uh, of my speaking events, and it's been it's been amazing to see it's, it how, is. how the reach goes out. And you know, once I'm sure, you know, with with your place, Joan uh, and, and Anne Marie as well. Once you get people in there probably feel pretty good that they're going to come back or again as you were saying word of mouth seems to be you know a good uh, a good vehicle for that as well and how about you what are you doing I know you're all over the place in regards to the uh, the networking group that you belong to right right yeah there's a, a few networking groups that I'm active in um, and also advertising in South Shore Living and Old Colony um, and um, the Patriot Ledger we were just carried in the Patriot Ledger I think because of uh, one of the writers who shared our article oh. or information. Um, so yeah, that that's huge. But uh, you know, I, I I find it is the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's just so many people out there that don't know we're in business still. You know, so I encourage people to spread the word because Definitely. word of mouth is huge. Yeah. You know, and advertising is very expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, we d we do a lot with Facebook, um, but yeah, I think again, word of mouth is huge because if a friend recommends your business, other people are going to come. Their friends are going to oh, come, definitely. and their family are going to come. So that means a lot. That's great. Now, are there going to be other stores, other locations? Oh, not while I'm working full time. <laughs> <laughs> now, the six years I can retire from the corporate world. Okay. Um, but do you en but do you envision that in your in your in your in your big plan? If you look out. Uh, not that you have to go crazy and be like a Dunkin' Donuts and be on every no, street corner. I don't want to go crazy. Maybe three at the most. Mm -hmm. um, they will be, if I do do it, it would be completely me and my family. Yep. There won't be, you know, investors or anything like that. Um, I don't want to be a chain. I don't want to be a Mary Lou's. <laughs> <laughs> um, you look good in pink, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of my colors. It is. <laughs> um, I, nothing like that. I want to keep it small. I want it... Because what ends up happening with a lot of small businesses is they become so big so fast that mm -hmm. they get lost. Yeah. So, and my mom and I have talked about that quite a bit, too. Like, I have gradually brought more and more items into, which I'm sure mm -hmm. you have with your store, into the cafe. Like, the cookies were a new addition this year. They are Italian cookies from the North End. You, they're sold by the pound. Um, so you don't have to go to the North End for those either. So I'm constantly bringing in new ideas. I brought in candy this year, too. So I have the um, Pergina candy bars, mm -hmm. which I offer now, too. So, uh, so I'm finding that helps. I mean, I have my regulars. I've got a lady that comes in every week, gets her three candy bars. <laughs> you know, I've got to make sure I have those stocks. She gets upset. But, um, but so adding different things here and there and changing things around so it's not much. I don't ever always have the same desserts in my case. Mm -hmm. So um, I switch them out, 
makes you want to come in and see what she got sure today. <laughs> so, um, and I know on Facebook as well, you'll announce that you've got this new item, oh, yes. which I'm sure your crowd sees, and it's all we got to get in there and see what's going on. Yeah, so when I do offer whole cakes, I have birthday cakes now, too. Um, I even have a gluten-free one, Andrew. Uh -oh, I'll and be yours down. just went by. I know. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't get a call. <laughs> it's chocolate, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> but um, so I do offer the birthday cakes, and we will write on them. We just need, I just, I'll take orders for anything. For cake wise, I need mm -hmm. just a week's notice and yeah. whatnot. But I am doing the platters for the holidays and the boxes of cookies. And Great. Joan, mm -hmm. how about yourself? You see another location or two, or? Um, I, possibly, you know, I, I think my, my focus is just so much on this particular mm -hmm. location. Mm -hmm. And, um, you yeah, know, I think I worry like you do about losing that connection with the, yes. the customers. And um, you can't be everywhere. You can't. Right? <laughs> so. Well, I think also what happens sometimes, too, is that, um, uh, and I, I guess the analogy I will use is, you know, as a musician, I play one night a month. Mm -hmm. I've got friends of mine who are musicians. <clears throat> They play every weekend, if not Saturday or a Friday night and a Saturday, mm -hmm. and to the point where it becomes overwhelming and you don't get to any breathing time, mm -hmm. then to me it isn't fun anymore. Mm -hmm. And so you know you're you're starting to build up your businesses now, and to you know add more onto it, um, at least in, you know within you know the next couple of years, I would think would would sort of defeat. The purpose of, of why you got into business, mm -hmm. which was probably to be able to uh, either make that break from the corporate world, um, or you know, from a a full time job, um, which you know we do because we got to pay bills, we got to mm -hmm. you know we got to we got to survive. <clears throat> but being able to get to that point where you know you know it's yours, it's your baby, you built it, you nurtured it, and you know now it's able to stand on its own. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then maybe look at that second location or third location. I think as you had mentioned, and I've seen this happen several different times, where they end up biting off more than they can chew. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're, when you're dealing with buying real estate or renting real estate in, the, in that case, because <clears throat> we know economies uh, can change, and, uh, you know, whether it's you know, in, in a particular market where all of a sudden the major employer, you know, all of a sudden there's nobody working at that location anymore, so you lose a percentage of your population. Um, so there's always, always those challenges. Um, what would you say has been the highlight of, of again, owning your own business? And, you know, when you go into the morning and you open up that door, you turn the lights on, when you stand there and look, what what, is, what do you what do you think? What are you thinking? Well, for me, it starts when I wake up in the morning and I get to see the bay because we have that view of the ocean yeah. of the bay, and I mean it's it's amazing. And every day I wake up thankful that you know I I can do this. Yeah. And then go to work with my dog, and you know it's like yeah. life is good. Yeah. I don't ask for much. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's it's wonderful. I mean, knowing that, um, you know, my future and my. Um, it's in my hands. I mm -hmm. mean, the sky's the limit, you yeah. know, which is, it's a blessing. Yeah. Great. How about you? <laughs> I walk in, well, it's not my first pride and joy. My first pride and joy is my daughter, but it's, I feel like I've accomplished a lot. I've raised my daughter by myself um, from when she was born and I've come a long way. So I walk in there and I'm very proud of what I've done, what I've accomplished. And I know some of the uh, the old colony piece that they did on you have you and, you and your daughter out front with your Mary Tyler Moore. Like, ah. <laughs> well, that girl. That girl. That Anne Marie. Girl. Anne Marie. What's her name? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what was uh, Thompson? What was it? Uh, Thomas. Yeah, she yeah. had the dark hair. Danny's and daughter. Yeah, Danny yeah. Thomas's yeah. daughter. Uh, Kenny, do we have a call? Tell David to call back. He keeps hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> Like the best show he's ever seen. Tell him when I say hello, Hey, Dave, Gallerani, when you call in, just stay on the line long enough, okay? Um, as you were getting, sitting down, and again, if there's people out there, uh, and again, if anyone does want to call and talk to our crew, uh, of course, Kenny doesn't have the phone number on here, but I have it right here in my thing, 508 830 3971. 
if anyone wants to uh, call in, if you know these lovely ladies and want to call in um, and say hi and tell them what a great sh uh, store and shop that they have, feel free to do that. There we go. <laughs> we got a call. Our one, our one viewer, Dave Gallerani. No, watch. It's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> We got a call coming in. Or you're just getting your uh, your grocery list together put your from Karen. Up. Your cookies? No. 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 I think you should. They're in a box. Oh. I didn't put them on a platter or oh. anything. Hello, who do we have calling? Hey, there you are. Hey, Mr. Gallerani. Merry Christmas. Hi, how are you? Bon Natale. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was home making a little bolognese sauce. Getting ready for Christmas, and uh, you know, I flipped on the show like I always do, and uh, I heard my name mentioned, so uh, <laughs> I thought I'd call in and congratulate these two young ladies for the nice job they're doing with their little businesses downtown, trying to make it work. It's all good stuff. I love to see that kind of stuff in Plymouth. Well, and, and you're you go back well now with with Kevin four generations, uh, with you know with your with your grandfather actually starting. Um, a small little business here in, in Plymouth, and now, you know, look how that's grown. Yeah, and uh, let, let me just tell those ladies something right now. There's, I get up every day, and I'm just as worried as they are about <laughs> where the business is going to come from to support 32 people, okay? So it's all relative, and I certainly understand the struggles and the concerns because uh, there's not a day goes by that I don't think, geez, should we do this or... Maybe we should have done that better, or we could have done this, or we could have done that, and how come it's not busy today, and how come it's crazy tomorrow? So it's um, being in business, small business is a struggle, and um, I was happy to see that the um, selectmen voted uh, to keep one tax rate for the town of Plymouth, and um, I'll just leave that alone, but <laughs> it, it helps to hear that because it's the small businesses just like those people and myself and you that would be hurt mostly by that because we know, you know, the uh, the Walmarts and those people, yeah, they're going to come up with the cash because they got more money than God, but uh, us, us little guys around town, we got to, you know, we got to take care of our own a little bit here, so. Well, and Dave, and, and, you know, knowing you for the number of years that I have, I mean, the one thing that I've always been impressed about the business that you run is you know you've got you know 30 plus people that you know you're responsible for and I'm sure that even puts more of a burden or uh, sits heavy on your mind when you lay your head down sometimes at night that you're you know you're actually providing uh, the ability of these people to make a mortgage a car payment put their kids through school but what I think is great and again you're you're you know you're you're a town guy but the fact that you go in and you cook breakfast for your guys and gals pretty much every morning. Is just, so anyone out there uh, around probably like eight eight thirty <laughs> nine o'clock if you're hungry and you get an oil change, just go in the back room and there's usually some bacon and eggs and stuff back there uh, that Dave will be more than happy to the, to flip a couple eggs for you. No, yeah, it was breakfast and lunch today. We have breakfast and lunch every day. What was for what was for lunch today? Pie and tomorrow stuffed shells with uh, salad and garlic bread and maybe some meatballs. <laughs> Are you hiring? <laughs> Everybody wants to come work there for a little while, but um, no, we have a good time with it. It's kind of fun, and uh, business is good, and we're happy for that. I'm very lucky. My son uh, Kevin's doing a really outstanding job with the body shop side. So, Dave, um, what advice would you give? to people uh, thinking about or contemplating opening up a small business? Well, I think um, both of them spoke about having a business plan, which I have to laugh because I, I can't imagine my father or my grandfather had a business plan. <laughs> <laughs> the plan was work 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours a day, and work Saturdays and Sundays. And, you know, in those days, you could make it doing that. And they, they were... They were bright in their own ways. They had, they had good business sense. They, they knew things, you know, real basic things like spend less than you make, you know. <laughs> generation, I'm not sure that they all quite understand when they're driving around in their BMWs and their Mercedes. Yeah. I, I see it all the time, and I just kind of laugh. But uh, 
they had good business sense. They saved their money, and it was a generation, you know, that came out of the Depression. So they, they knew what it was. To, what was funny was my father said, I never realized I was poor until I, I was an adult, and then I realized how poor we really were. And so they didn't know they were poor. Everybody was poor back yeah. in those days. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, once they get to where you get, then you have to kind of control your uh, spending habits and, and do the right thing and provide for your children and send them to college and et cetera, et cetera. So <laughs> it's all good. So uh, my Sarah just had a baby a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yes, I saw that. So um, we're a grandfather twice now, and uh, we're very happy about that. Wonderful. So uh, you never know. There might be a fifth generation. You just never know. Hey, well, if you have, you, I don't know. Can you, get, can you get Kevin down that aisle? <clears throat> I don't know, but Sarah's got a little boy. <laughs> Watch out, Kevin. I don't want to get into that with on on the air. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I get shot. Right. Well, Dave, uh, thanks for calling in, and again, we always appreciate you uh, calling in during our shows. Uh, and again, you you know you really are. I see both of you now. It's uh, very good to know what everybody does down there. Great. All right, buddy. Uh, Thank you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I'm sure I'll catch up with you soon. Well, that was nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that was a question I was going to ask you guys as well. Uh, is Anne Marie uh, thinking back on the two and a half years? You know, one of the things that I do as a as a business coach and coaching uh, existing businesses or new businesses is I can sort of help them uh, not make the mistakes that many other people make when they first try to open up mm -hmm. a business or, or uh, you know, whatever that endeavor may be. What advice would you give to people uh, that are thinking about or contemplating uh, opening up a business? Definitely be prepared for the unexpected. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's there's going to be many of them expenses that make sure you have enough working capital after you open to get you through. I mean, I've been there two and a half years now, and there are still people in that live in Plymouth that don't even know I'm there, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you yeah. feel the same yeah. way. Um, a lot of people don't go downtown, but that's I would definitely make sure you have a solid business plan. I will say, I did not hit my numbers my first year. Um, I think I would have been shocked if I did. <laughs> um, however, we are above, we have done better every year so far since we've been in business. So just prepare, make sure you have enough working capital, cash in the bank, yeah. And, and just, you know, I do work full time, so I do depend on my mom mm -hmm. um, because I need that, that job to, for health insurance, put my daughter through college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need that income. I didn't open up my business to get rich. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of an enjoyment for me. I mean, eventually I will, as long as I can pay the bills, I'll be fine. Um, you know, so just be prepared. Don't spend more than you make. As he had mentioned, <laughs> which a lot of people do, they you know hit and then they go and then all of a sudden something crashes yeah. and here you are with all these expenses and so I, I keep I keep things at a minimum. As a business owner, I think one of the mottos is you always pay yourself last. Yes, mm -hmm. I take no income from that cafe. Mm -hmm. None. With, if anything, I'm putting equity into it mm -hmm. um, right now. But they say three to five years. Yep. Definitely plan for three to five years. Mm -hmm. And you've also got the. Um, Soon, the town, the new town hall. Opening Very up. excited mm -hmm. about that because right. currently I am closed on Mondays and Tuesdays during the fall and winter. I'm looking to stay open seven days a week, and looking to also do breakfast seven days a week, so that I can bring the town hall. The, a lot mm -hmm. of people down t at the town hall have been in the cafe. They love yeah. my coffee, so we'll see what happens. That's <laughs> great. And Joan, how about you mm. in, in regards to again looking back on the two two years? Um, what advice would you give to somebody who's sitting there going, hmm, what if I should open up my own business? I found um, the SCORE organization to be a really great uh, resource for me. Mm -hmm. That's the, the retired um, business people, and um, they have a, a great group here at the Plymouth Chamber. Um, they're wonderful. They're free. You know, it's free yeah. to use um, their services. So, um, yeah, having a business plan is really important. I, I find that um, a lot of that business plan, when you're first um, putting it together, um, it's it's a bit of a, um, a crystal ball that you have to 
<laughs> so you put these numbers <laughs> together. It's like, I don't know what, really what these are based on, but you do the best you can. And, and it, it does become more um, more accurate as you go. You know, you get better at Definitely. predicting. And um, But yeah, just tap into local resources that are available. I, and, and I mean, other business owners. I have found people in Plymouth, other business owners, to be very helpful. So that would be my recommendation is to talk to other people. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Enough two in one in one show? Wow. <laughs> Hello, who's calling? Oh, Carolyn. Hi Carolyn, <laughs> how are you? I just wanted to say I'm very we're very proud of my daughter. She's doing a great job. And um sorry to say I did not get the station because I'm in Carver and it didn't come on. I had something else. <laughs> And, and who might your daughter be? Yeah, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that, yeah. So I'm sorry I'm missing this, uh, missing this whole thing, uh, but I'm hearing all about it from my sister. <laughs> well, it'll be, um, I believe at some point, Carver and Plimpton and the surrounding towns do get a copy of this tape, and uh, we'll be playing it, correct? Ken at some point? Yeah, I was so disappointed. I was watching this guy, and then all of a sudden I figured she was going to come on, and I, uh, a choir came on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could sing for you, too, if you want. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it'll be on Facebook and then also YouTube. So when I actually get the link for it, I can send that to Anne-Marie, uh, Anne and she can email that to you, and you can yeah. just open up the link to YouTube, and it, it'll be the whole show on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> See, technology, Carolyn, is an amazing thing. <laughs> She's listening to the dog. She's not even paying okay. attention. <laughs> Anything else, Carolyn? No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go make some more cookies, will you? Well, yeah, sure, I will. Okay. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. All right, bye bye. <laughs> She's a, and she's, a, I tell you, she's a hard worker. She she's is. Mom. She's yeah. in there. She goes in early. She waxes the floors. She washes the windows. Oh, yeah. She's great. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, let's see. We got a few more. Ken, what do we go? We go out at 55? 56? Uh, it's 8.53. We're going out at 8.58. Okay. So we got, we got five minutes. Um, can, Would you I, like a cookie? Are you? I will have one shortly. But can we can we pan over to our little display? Do you want me to push the button? Yeah. Where's the button? It's on one of the pads there. It's uh. Oh really? Has it got to be the right. Okay, hold on. Really? But before we before we uh, before we go pads? out, we wanted to be able to. Uh, it's on. It's on the board itself. It's not. I can't find it. Oh, okay. it must be this one. No, it's right on the top. Wait. It's a little button. Look on the other side. I did. No, it's right there. It's not, oh, there it is. Ready? <laughs> What's Christmas without the original Charlie Brown Christmas tree? <laughs> huh? <laughs> awesome. We're gonna, we'll continue talking, but I just wanted everybody to sit back and just really take in the whole spirit of Christmas here. The Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. Your life doesn't get any better than that. And the docs is too Thank you, Ken. Thank you for supporting my wacky sense of humor. Um, but uh, so we've got any, any special events that you guys have coming up? I know that you've got things, you know, throughout the year as well. Anything mm -hmm. coming up? Uh... February 11th, we have a Kendra Scott trunk show. So that's a, a jewelry line that we carry. Okay. Um, we have this new jewelry line uh, actually imported from Italy. Um, so it's um, by a woman who lives in Plymouth. The name of the company is Lux. Um, I'm friends with her. With Rhonda? Yes, oh, I know her everybody very knows well. Rhonda. Yes. Yeah, so this oh, is wow. one of her pieces. So we're bringing this in in the spring. So I'm really excited Great. about it. Yeah. Great. And so you'll do things throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Yep. And in March, we have another book event, a local author. Um, so, yeah, we have a lot going on. So I'll post it on Facebook and on our website as well and, and blast it out to folks and let them know. That's great. Yeah. Great. And how about yourself? I have no events planned. I'm looking. I have put out there, you know, book clubs, mm -hmm. more than welcome to come in. That would be I, great you for know? that in a you know, morning or an afternoon at the, at the uh, 
cafe. You know, we close on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We close at six, but if we had a book club coming in, it would be just for them. We, you know, I would stay there. They could get a percentage off. So I've tried. I've looked for different ideas on different things to bring in there, and um, you know, even if I've thought of doing for the holidays, having different um, vendors set up, but I kind of wasn't on top of it right away. It was almost like a last minute thing. Mm -hmm. So next year, that's something that I'm definitely going to work on to have vendors in and maybe yeah, we bring should work you, together. Yeah, bring yeah. you up. Mm -hmm. um, because again, that collaboration with mm. the waterfront in the main, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they definitely need to work on that. So if we yeah. collaborated together. And you could probably great. check with, um, you know, whether it's the, the Plymouth Library, the, uh, the Plimpton Library, because I'm sure they would have an idea of, of book clubs. Mm -hmm. Might be something, or even create create an event on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know that you're you know you're thinking you know, of trying to promote a book club, and if anybody's interested, because uh, I think that'd be you know that would be ideal. It's been mm -hmm. something I've I've been pondering on for a mm -hmm. while. I've mentioned yeah. it to a few people. I have friends who are in book clubs. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned it, so I, I'm not quite sure how they work, but there is a host. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and they choose where. The book club's going to meet. Where to meet? <laughs> um, typically, also they'll, uh, you know, what book to read. Right. And then I think everyone gets to kind of be able to say, well, you know, the next month, um, you know, then let's try to read this author mm -hmm. or what, whatever the case case may be. Because it's just, I mean, it's amazing when I was putting my book together, that and I was, you know, searching titles and what the book was going to be called and all that. I was amazed at not your you know your regular well-known authors, but just all the small mm -hmm. self-published books that are out there. I mean, there's tens of thousands <clears throat> of them, um, and you know, in, in promoting the book, you know, I I, I use Facebook a lot. Um, I also go on to LinkedIn with a lot of my professional associates from around the country. So, like you, I'm always looking for ways to to promote uh, mm -hmm. to promote that as well. So. Um, yeah, we've got about uh, 10 seconds left. Anna Marie, um, Anna Marie, Anna Marie. <laughs> Anna Marie. Just like I, Joan I've been Collins. called worse. I've been called worse. <laughs> um, anything you want to just say before you we um, head out of the show? Well, we are still accepting orders for holiday platters up until um, Friday at 5 o'clock. So if anybody needs any holiday platters or if anybody has any book clubs or great ideas and want to bring them in. And what are your store hours? I am open Wednesday and Thursday, noon to 6, Fridays, noon to 8 p.m. Saturdays, you'll find me there cooking right breakfast. Mm -hmm. 8 a.m., we're open till 8 p.m. And Sundays right now, 12 to 6. Okay. And Joan? Actually, no, Sundays, <laughs> 8 a.m. to okay. 6. We're open 10.30 to 5, and we're open right up until um, Christmas Eve. So I'll open early, 9.30 to 2.30. Um, in March, we have Cliff Aguirre coming. Um, he wrote a book about people passing on, and it's an incredible book of these uh, authentic stories that happen for people that have passed on and, and what they've reported and what they've seen. So it's very Great. cool. Well, I want to thank um, our guest, Anna Marie Dessert Cafe with Anna Marie Oriola, and also Joan Lyons of Three Daughters Jewelry and Apparel. Again, uh, make sure that you do go out and visit your local small businesses. That's what keeps Plymouth thriving. And uh, make sure that you have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Uh, bon Natale. And uh, Feliz Año Nuevo, which is a Happy New Year. And everybody, we'll see you back here again. Have a safe holiday. And uh, make it a great day on purpose.